Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Today we're going to be reacting to a video by Aristotle Investments. So check out this video. Black man, if you complain in America, you're wrong because you got help. They make sure you get a basic standard of living in America. Like I'm talking about the very, very bottom is a trailer or an apartment in the hood. That's better than Africa. The bottom there is outside, no AC, no electricity, barely no running water. That's their poor. Our poor has a flat screen, a AC, free school with a bus coming to pick them up, welfare, food stamp, Medicaid. That's a lot of benefits. And we sit here and complain and say these they ain't doing enough for us. America is stupid, believe it or not. We go back to Africa, if we go poor, we're poor as Now, do they have a middle class? Yes. But the difference is Africa has a very large poor class, very small middle class and wealth class, versus us, our biggest class is actually middle class. All right, Kirby. So we discussed this video a little bit last night. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was a debate or not, but Basically, you pointed out some stuff um, that honestly I wasn't looking at to begin with. I was just comparing the conditions he was comparing in America to, say, Africa in this case, or third world countries. But go ahead and make your point with what you see on this. No, uh, um, let's take it. Let's take it one one step further. Let's take it one step further because I was. When we when you sent me this video yesterday, uh, I was very critical of the verbiage that he used, and that's probably my fault. But I'm gonna take a step back and say when he said, "If you're a man in America, compared to Africa, you can't complain," because he said that if you're poor in America and you're poor in Africa, it's two different levels of poor. But when he said man, I took it as man, like only the males. That's what I took it as. You got gotcha, gotcha. But I'm going to take it in the biblical text, man meaning man and woman. Uh, he's correct. I mean, I know it was, a, it was a 180 degree turn from what I did yesterday, but he is correct if you're talking about a population in general. Yeah, poor in Africa is worse than uh, poor in America. Um, I still don't agree with him saying the bottom of the barrel. Bottom of the barrel in America is the same as bottom of the barrel in Africa. Um, meaning bottom of the barrel means you're sleeping on the streets and you have nothing. And bottom of the barrel in Africa mean the same thing. Uh, but is there more opportunities and things like that in America for them to get from the bottom of the barrel, at least get on their feet? Is there more opportunity, more government programs, more subsidies, more opportunities to get a job or create a business in America than in Africa? Yes. But I still believe bottom of the barrel is bottom of the barrel. And But he is right for men and women in general, for families in general, there is more programs. Uh in America than it is in Africa. I don't think Africa had any programs at all. But but yeah, what he's saying. Um, but I'm gonna stop right there, Alex. Sorry. Uh here you know. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I I think the what I understood when he said man was just saying like as humans or as people, uh being in America is, you know. Being poor in America is better than being poor in another country. But I do agree with you. Uh, the bottom of the barrel in America is not having a trailer. You know, that's actually a benefit. But it's people that are living in the streets. Now, I do think, though, that Americans believe that they are impoverished when they live in the projects or they live in a trailer park or things like that i think they consider themselves as poor that is considered poor here when people that are in that are impoverished in these third world countries are i mean sleeping in shacks and in the streets and stuff but there are homeless people obviously in america as well now i do like that he brought light to conditions in say africa and i mean you've been all over the world and you've been to multiple third world countries and you can see 
the conditions and I've only been to one uh, as far as, you know, you can't drink, you can't even like worst case scenario, like we were talking about last night, like a homeless person here can go inside of a public business and drink water out of the public bathroom sink or something like you can still drink or use the bathroom or wash yourself the best you can or whatever. And you're living on the street, but you have access to these, I guess, amenities, so to say, where you can be in better conditions, even though it's the worst conditions in America, still better than those in third world countries. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't, and this is just me, or maybe I'm, I live a shelter life. Um, in America, businesses is not just opening doors to homeless people saying, hey, yeah, come in and use our public facilities. Can they sneak in and do it? Yeah. But it's not just a all hands, hey, yeah, you can come in here. I mean, I would, Ebor, let's use Ebor, for instance. Ebor is a couple, you know, homeless people there. They can't free willy nilly, they'll sit there and panhandle buy a convenience store or something like that. But they're not vegging out going into the bathroom without because, you know, once they, the owner or the employee see you once, because they know it still brings a, a bad stigma to their place of business. So it's not, they're not like um, San Francisco just open arms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just come in. You can do whatever you want to. I'm just talking about in Florida. I mean, I mean, in Detroit, it was the same way. I mean, yeah, it was homeless people paying, handling, buying the stores and facilities on the outside, but they wasn't free willy-nilly going in. Maybe a public park, they might have, you know, a water fountain there, yeah, um, restroom there, and then homeless people sneak in, but it's not saying, it ain't signs saying, oh, homeless people just come use this as shelter. That's what I'm saying. It, they have to go through trials and tribulations to get access. It's not just, you know, water fountains and water stations everywhere. You know what I mean? They they have to dig through trash. They have to dig through trash. And now is it more stuff in American trash to eat than in third world countries? Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But it's still it's still it's still you still having to go through that. Uh when you say water you can't drink, um the thing is is Americans is is almost everywhere in the world is like a third world country to us because a lot of places around the world, I mean, probably besides right. Europe, we can't go to the tap and just drink the water. Right. We'd be over, killed over dead, uh, like in India and things like that. You drink the tap, you you down for the count, man, down. You know, so, yeah. I mean, there's more places in Mexico. You could just start adding them up. There's a lot of countries, you know, Southeast Asia, you can't just go in there and run in the tap. So, but everybody else's bodies are used to it. I mean, I remember being in Afghanistan and we wouldn't dare even think about, we barely washed our hands with that water, much less uh, drink it. But they, they go right up under the faucet and suck it down like it's the best thing ever. I'm like, <laughs> you talking about, I got rock gut. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they official, you know what I mean? They can do it all, but that's that's what I'm saying. That's that's the difference between the uh, between the two. Uh, but I mean, still, when it comes to the humanity of it, when it comes to the the self pride of it, homeless is homeless. That's that's how I look at it. I mean, not having is not having, and and yeah. but there is more opportunities in America. I'll just stop right there. Yeah, no, I, I see your points. I see your points completely. And it, I'm not saying businesses are out there just accepting homeless people. I'm just saying that um, America's more developed is all. I think America is way more yeah. far developed than all these third world countries. When you look at the impoverished parts of these countries, it's it's completely like, just. I mean, it's just in ruins compared to having tents propped up in a in a rundown area in America or something but that was my takeaway from him was just I like that he pointed out the because I think a lot of Americans are sheltered they haven't left the United States and I mean especially it was an eye-opener for me just seeing Colombia so to say I mean that was 
and it's not saying Colombia is a crappy country. It's just like seeing the parts that were bad in Colombia was very bad compared to the United States. Even being in, you know, in the bad parts of D.C. or Tampa or whatever. I mean, compared to here, I was like, wow, that's that's pretty bad. Um, but that was that was my only takeaway. I just like that he shined light on, you know, two Americans like there's other parts of the world where when they're impoverished, it's worse than how we've got it here. But yeah, that was, that was all. And, and, uh, and another thing that I wanted to bring up, like, especially you heard it a lot during the 2020, well, 2018, 16 elections with uh, when Trump was running for office and things like that. You heard of people in my community, African American community, talking about oh, going back to Africa. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't just African Americans; it was people in other cultures talking about they leaving America. You know, uh, especially in the black community, it was talking about going back to Africa. Let me tell you a secret: people in Africa don't even like African Americans in the United States. The reason why is because they wish they had the opportunities just to make money that people in the United States have. So you can go back to Africa if you want to, and you think racism is bad here in America. It's going to be a different world when you step foot on Africa and the same people that look like you is don't like you much more than you think the white people don't like you in America because they can't fathom it. They can't fathom having an opportunity just an opportunity. Not, hey, somebody hand me, not the government just hand me some money, just the opportunity to provide. In these third world countries, they don't even have an opportunity to provide. I mean, it's the next house may be millions of miles away, no transportation, no nothing, no goods, no services, no land, even cultivate to sell. Just an opportunity. And I wish more people Especially, I'm going to talk about my community. I don't care about you know, what everybody else is doing. But I wish people in my community is, is stop thinking vacations is going into Jamaica and the Caribbean and actually go to another another country. Or if you, or when they do go to Jamaica and the Caribbean, stop just going to the tourist resort thinking you done did something. Why don't you go out there in the creases and see what's going on and seeing how the real world is. You know, they, they get this, this, uh, Fake sense of security thinking because they in the Caribbean are going on cruises and they staying at these uh, resort hotels that this is the culture. No, go in the culture and see what it's really like. Then you'll have a more, much more appreciation of what's going on. Because when you in these countries, even Jamaica, I mean, you might have some, you know, in the capital or something, you might have people well off, but most of the country is poor, dirt pro. And you you have the ability to vacation and do that on the backs of these people who living in shanty houses, shacks, who uh, got feces running through their backyard. But they don't ever get to see that. And they just think they see a couple pictures on Instagram and YouTube. And then you see people in South Africa at the capital. And they think, oh, that's all Africa. Hell no. Actually go into these countries and see what the culture is like. Then you will realize that you have more opportunity. And there is no excuse. And if you go to these countries, that's exactly how they look at you. You have no excuse. And I know a lot of people from the African continent ran to a lot of people, and they all say the same thing. How can how can Americans, especially blacks who call themselves Africans, African Americans, they never been to Africa? How can they complain? They have an opportunity, and that's one of the things that just amazed me. And of course, nobody controls where they're born at, but that's the thing that amazed me. They don't really know what they're saying. They're just saying it just because it's a catchphrase or sounds good. But they ain't never been through it to know what's going on. But I digress. This video was going on a little too long, so I'll stop right there. All right, with all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.